which is a small um, educational nonprofit that is based in Paris, France, which is where I currently am dealing with a time change a week ahead of the US. So all of the times have been a little wonky this week, but um, basically IFE runs study abroad programs in three Francophone cities, um, which is most likely what you're interested in. We have one program in Spain, but um, I don't think that's been pre-approved by Northwestern. So I'll speak about the three Francophone programs today. Um, those programs are located in Paris, where I am currently in Brussels, uh, the capital of Belgium, Europe, beautiful city, which I'll speak about in a moment, and in Strasbourg, which is a medium-sized city on the northeastern border of France with Germany. Um, all three of these programs really follow the same program model, which is what we call the field study and internship model. Um, and basically they are a very non-traditional style of study abroad program. Um, this is where I'm gonna pause for a moment and I'm gonna ask you, if you wouldn't mind in the chat, just letting me know um, really quickly. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about where you are, whether you want a general overview of the program. I know this is being recorded, so I'll do that. But also, if you wouldn't mind just telling me what your interests are um, as far as language, I assume that you know that this is a French speaking program, um, but also it's a program really for students who want to explore their field, they want to explore an interest maybe outside of the language, but in the country of that language and speaking that language. So for instance, we have biology students, journalists, journalism students, um, you know, social sciences, uh, basically the entire gamut of majors, we have students from that. Um, so if you, if you feel like it, obviously, um, feel free to put in the chat what your major is or what your interest is maybe outside of the language. Um, and that will allow me to give you some examples of what students have done in those fields, which kind of illustrates what the semester looks like. So um, the programs are uh, in, entirely in French, um, which is I think maybe the most important thing to get across that this program um, requires a, a high intermediate level of French. You definitely don't have to be fluent, 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 fluent. You definitely have to be uh, comfortable, have taken a class that's maybe beyond the language grammar learning cycle and done um, something more topical in the language. Because once you come to IFE, everything will be in French. Um, that said, you can explore any of any field that you want um, in the language. And the way that you do that is through an internship field placement. Internship is sort of the word we use to translate from the French stage, but stage can mean many different things. And I think for different students and fields, it, def it definitely does mean different things. Um, the internships are really individualized to what you want to do. So for each student, that looks very different. Uh, that said, we don't put you into the internship on day one because doing that is, is um, you know, it's not the same as doing an internship in your home language, in your home culture. So you need a lot of preparation to really be ready to go to work in France or Belgium. So you spend the first five weeks of the program in interdisciplinary courses that IFE has designed to give you this crash course in what you need to know about life in Strasbourg, the history of French politics, society, composition, social issues, um, you know, uh, how the importance of culture uh, in Belgium, very few people study Belgium. So, you know, in, in French departments specifically. So it will give you really a lot of information about Belgium that most people don't have. So the idea of that first five weeks is really, you know, giving, getting you situated in the culture where you're going to be working and also getting you comfortable speaking French and getting you out of the classroom to explore the city. So it's a very intensive period. Um, you know, we call it the preparatory session, but it's not like you're preparing for a specific internship. You're preparing to do an internship in France or Belgium. Um, then you have a week off to travel and rest. <laughs> Highly recommend resting. People never take my advice, but it was well worth it. And then you start the internship. And the internship is really, like I said, the main goal of the program. And it's, it's not only um, it's not a, a replacement for a course. It's really uh, supposed to be tied into your academic interests because that's the how, that's how internships really work in in France. So, um, and also in Belgium. So, if you're interested, for instance, in consulting, fashion, marketing, general business, we have 
many students um, who have been in those various fields. So either, you know, we have students who've worked with consulting firms, um, fashion and marketing. I mean, I will name names, just keeping in mind that these are not internships that are like a list that we have. We've had students who've worked for Vogue. We've had students who've worked for, um, you know, Paco Rabanne, for smaller fashion houses, for um, uh, uh, Chanel uh, in the marketing department, you know, actually someone from Northwestern did, um, you know, and again, so the way that we find these internships is that in our application process, you tell us what your interests are, what your background is, because, you know, obviously you, your skills come into the equation um, and, and what, how this kind of fits into the arc of your studies or maybe your career path. And, and we find this internship based on that. So um, it is a highly individualized experience that allows you to get experience abroad. It allows you to get experience in another language, in another culture. Um, and also the third and major component is it allows you to engage in a independent but guided research project. So you have an advisor in the field um, who will, you know, an academic advisor who will help you sort of choose your topic and make sure that it's based on your internship and the work that you're doing and make sure that it's appropriate for the amount of writing that you have to do. And you write uh, what's called a memoir de stage. So a major research paper based on the work that you do in the internship. So it's sort of like a hybrid between a research paper you might do on campus and an internship report of what you're doing in the internship. So you, this is a, you know, a common thing in France that if you do an internship, it has to be tied into an academic degree. And if you do that you have to do some sort of research. So this is um, the internship places are they are used to that. So no matter what field it's in, um, you know, you use your colleagues, you interview them, use data, you have access to case studies, um, and you do this. You delve really into this uh, topic that's is super interesting to you, and compose this research paper, which is how you get academic credit for the experience is through this research. So you do get a full semester of academic credit. You get class experience, you get work experience, you get research experience, and you come out speaking French very fluidly, I will say, and most students speaking fluently. So it's a charged semester. It's definitely not easy. Um, it's not for everyone. And it's really just if that sort of excites your interest, then this might be a program for you. I also would add that most Northwestern students do this program in the fall, although some do choose to do it in the spring semester. Um, the fall mainly because the amount of credit that you get would exceed what you would be missing in missing one quarter of school, whereas in the spring, it would not quite be equal to two credits. Um, I'm sorry, two quarters worth of credit. Um, but uh, that again is you know up to you. Most students do this junior or even senior year sometimes. So. Um, Anyone have any questions? Emily, can put it in the chat. Emily, yeah. Can you talk about the housing option for students? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, in Brussels, the housing options basically we work with a woman who that is her um, her sort of you know profession is to sort of find housing for people. Um, so it ranges from homestay families for people who want that sort of more protected kind of experience to uh, kind of a flat share situation where you will have like a roommate who is an usually a um, you know a younger young professional kind of, but that's a more independent living situation where you're you know living in an apartment. Um, and then some student houses where it's like more of a shared suite kind of situation where you share a kitchen and kind of each have your individual room. Um, and then in Strasbourg and Paris, there are the options of homestay families, um, but fewer students choose that. Uh, most students choose the option of a foyer, which is a residence for young professionals, apprentice, uh, apprentices, and mainly students who come to Strasbourg and Paris to study. So it's people like yourself, essentially. Um, there's age caps. So I think everyone there is under 25 years old. You have a small room. It's definitely not fancy. It's, you know, it's clean. You have your own bathroom for the most part. Um, definitely your own room, access to a kitchen to cook meals. And there are some foyers where you can have meals if you want. There's a cafeteria there or you can choose to have a foyer without meals. So um, most students do that. And all of the housing that we find is Francophone housing. And that's really important that it would be French speaking, that these foyers are French students or international students who, who speak French as well. Um, and it's a major kind of like social component, the housing to really meet people. Um, and then also your internship, people meet people in their internships as well. So uh, that's those are the housing options. And also you may house independently, but uh, that's not something that we recommend. Most students don't do that unless they have family and it's 
convenient for them to live with them. Any, any other questions that come to mind? I am going to put my email address um, into the chat. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to just send me an email. I'm like answer questions most, most, <laughs> most of the time. Um, I just like a small note about city choice, you know, the same program model that I described exists in these three cities, but obviously it feels really different in each city. So again, if you have questions about, um, you know, choosing a city, you know, they all have a very different vibe, a different feeling. I would say most internships can be found in most of the cities, except for um, if you're interested in fashion, Paris would be the place to go. I'm not saying Brussels is not fashionable, but it's not the capital of fashion that Paris is. So there are certain fields that do lend themselves to certain locations, but most other things we can find an internship in any of the three cities. So really it's sort of, do I want a larger city? Do I want a smaller city? Do I want to be able to get out of the city in 20 minutes and be in the vineyards? Do I want to, you know, be really centrally located like Brussels, be able to kind of take the train anywhere I want to go? Um, you know, Brussels is a capital, but it's very young. It's very diverse. It's, it's, after London, it's kind of the most diverse city in Europe, and it, it, um, but it feels very cozy. It's got a lot of art going on. You know, Strasbourg is a very European city. It has the European capital, um, it's a parliament seat of the European Parliament there. But it's also it, it has a very large university. The University of Strasbourg plus Sciences Po means there's about fifty thousand students there. So it's kind of like a college town. I mean, it's a large city with its own identity, but it's got a lot of student activity going on there. Um, but it also is a little smaller, so maybe easier to kind of, um, you know, get to know intimately in the four and a half months that you'd be there. And then Paris is definitely a major capital, much more kind of, um, you know, it, it, it's almost, you know, it's, it's kind of got the centralized identity of France, but it's different than the rest of France, to be honest. So, um, you know, each of them really has things to recommend them and a different feeling. So again, if you have questions about that too, feel free to, to write to me. But also specifically, if you wanna talk about internships that students have done and research that they've done in your field, I'm happy to do that. Uh, Emily, can you tell us a little bit about the application process and if it's, and how competitive it is? Absolutely. Um, I get asked this a lot because as you could hear, it is a very challenging program um, with, you know, sort of a required language level and a clear amount of motivation that is required from students to be able to do this. Um, but that said, it's not a super exclusive program. It's much more of a self-selective program. So, um, you know, as I, what I have just described is actually, you know, if it, if it, the idea of you know, improving your French and getting this kind of international work experience and engaging in an independent research project appeals to you, then this is probably the right program for you. So if you meet the requirements of have the having the language level, um, and if you have at least a 3.0 GPA, and if you complete our application, which so that I, you apply first through Northwestern to get approved to study abroad, but then IFE has an online application, um, which I will actually put um, the address into the chat for that, um, because you can open an IFE application whenever you want, just to see what it, it, it consists of. Um, because most of what we ask for in the application is about placing you in the internship. So we ask for a lot of, we ask for a lot of documents, your, your resume in French, your resume in English, uh, you know, a short motivation letter or a cover letter, it's called the lettre de motivation in French. Um, we ask you questions like, what are your goals for this internship? What type of organization do you want to work for? Um, what in your background do you want to highlight? Um, you know, there's there's a lot that we that we ask for in the application. And the majority of it is not about determining admissibility. The majority is about really pinpointing what would be the ideal internship for you. And that's our jumping off point for looking for it. So after you're accepted and officially enrolled, um, we set up a meeting to Skype with you or Zoom with you to um, the program coordinator will to speak with you about what it is that you really want to do so that when we start reaching out to organizations to find you that internship, we're looking in the right direction and what we find will correspond to what your goals are. So it's kind of this back and forth process um, that starts with the application. But I recommend just opening the application, even if you don't plan to apply, just to check it out. And also I recommend not being intimidated by it because it involves a lot of documents and things because really most of that is about finding the internship. So, And our application deadline for the fall 
is April 10th, 2022. So for fall 2022, the application deadline is April 10th, 2022. We do operate with rolling admissions. So I would definitely recommend if you know you wanna do the program applying before then. Um, we have limited spaces. And I would say, you know, we don't, uh, we don't refuse qualified students from the program, but sometimes certain cities, namely Paris, tend to fill up quicker than others. And so if you really have a, an interest in going to one specific place, I recommend applying a little earlier because then you're guaranteed to get your place there. Um, we keep the groups small intentionally so that we can get to know the students better so that we can you know, follow their internships and support them throughout the way because it's not a program where we just let you go and say bye, see you at the end of the semester with your research paper. You know, we're there to kind of support you. You have a class throughout the internship once a week, um, you know, and we really get to know our students and are invested in, in sort of their experience. So we keep the groups fairly, fairly small in each of the cities. Thank you, Emily. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. Do you provide a list of organizations or companies that you work with for your intern? Um, so we, um, we do and we don't to a certain extent. It shouldn't be a complicated question, but it is in the sense that um, you know, we have, we definitely have lists of what students in various um, fields have done in the past, but we don't, we're not the type of, we're not a placement agency. So we don't work with a fixed list of companies and say, okay, you're your business, then you go to bis this business, you know, your fashion, then you go to this fashion, um, which I think a lot of places that's kind of like how they operate. It's like they have the, this internship and the, this internship, but because we sort of we start with the student rather with, than with the organization. Um, great, I have to head up. So this is my last thing. I'm just putting a link in there that has all IFE's online resources. So if you want to check out videos, photos, Instagram, the website, that link tree has it all. Um, but yeah, we basically, um, we, you know, we start with the student's profile and then we will contact organizations that we worked with, we'll contact totally new organizations. So every semester, uh, you know, like a third of the placements are totally new because the student profile is different than anything we've had before that or organizations we worked with before don't have any interesting projects going on, you know, they don't they don't want an intern at that particular time, the interns profile doesn't align with what they're looking for so um, I can definitely provide examples to any student who wants to know, um, but we don't tend to publish lists because then sometimes without that context, people get the wrong idea and they say, oh, I want this internship. And it's like, well, that internship doesn't exist, you know, just in perpetuity, you know? um, but we're happy to, to provide examples for sure. I do have lists that I can send anyone who wants to know specific areas. Thank you. Yeah.